Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome back from spring break. Everybody looks like they had a great week last week. You got some rest, you got some good food, you got some time in with friends and family. Um, so I am so happy to welcome you back to Bright Divinity School. Well, the psalmist once said that this is the day that our God has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. And if you are glad in it, please join me in celebrating our God this morning and everything that God is doing here at Bright Divinity School and beyond. Every day I wake up with breath in my lungs, I'm grateful. Every day that I wake up and I feel the blood pul pulsating through my veins, I am grateful because life is not to be taken for granted. And so I'm so grateful that each of you are here today with breath in your lungs and blood running through your body. And it means that God the creator is here with us and continues to invite us into co-creation. And it's a beautiful work in this world. Well, all month long, we've been um, unpacking and wrestling with the theme, reimagining God or reimagining faith God and self, which invites us to think about ourselves as vessels that God trusts, that God trusts us to go forward in the world and do amazing things. Every time God looks at this world and see the hurt and sees the pain and sees the suffering, God says, who will I send? Who will go? And so I'm so grateful that God trusts us and God has faith in us that we will say yes. Yes, God, I will go. Yes, God, send me. I hope that this morning will uh, uh, um, resonate with you and that you'll be excited about worshiping with us. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be back and, and, and to welcome back Emily Davis, our musician and worship leader on this morning. And you are in for such a treat with our preacher. You'll be hearing more about her shortly. Welcome to worship. Please stand and sing in the sanctuary with me and feel free to clap or move, sing out with me. We lift our hands in the sanctuary. We lift our hands to give you the glory. We lift our hands to give you the praise. And we will praise you for the rest of our days. Yes, and we will praise you for the rest of our days. We clap our hands in the sanctuary. We clap our hands to give you the glory. We clap our hands to give you the praise. And we will praise you for the rest of our days. Yes, and we will praise you for the rest of our days. We sing our song in the sanctuary. We sing our song to give you the glory. We sing our song to give you the praise. And we will praise you for the rest of our days. Yes, and we will praise you for the rest of our days. You may be seated. Please join me as we go to the spirit in prayer this morning. Almighty God, architect of life and love, abundant provider and steadfast protector. We come to you today a people humbled by the harsh realities of the broken and fallen world around us. But we come to you filled with hope because we know your goodness. 
We know what it is to be in the presence of God and the life-saving and life-changing love that you offer. Holy Spirit, we gather in your presence because you have and you are changing our lives. We gather here at Bright Divinity School because we are believing into you to change the world, and we want to be a part of it. Holy One, we praise you that we have seen and felt a glimpse of heaven and that you have inspired us to bring heaven to earth in your love, in your mercy, in your forgiveness, and in your reception of all your children. So almighty God, meet us here and strengthen our bodies and minds in hope and faith to be mighty like you. Architect of life and love, we pray you will build within us new dreams uninhibited by systems of the world and people. Inspire us to build for the expansion of your love and your gifts. Abundant provider, provide for us the confidence within the gifts your spirit has placed in each of us and the courage to move, not as the world choreographs conformity, but as you have called us to move. Steadfast protector, cover us so completely in your presence that even as we face hardship, adversaries, and self-machinated rerouting, nothing can stand against your protection. It's in your son's most holy and precious name we pray. Amen. Please pray with me. Creator God, as we gather this morning to worship, and to praise you. May your spirit dwell among us and within us. Today we celebrate the varied gifts you have bestowed upon your people and the ways in which we see those gifts in action throughout our school. After creating the heavens and the earth, the sea, the vegetation, the animals and all humankind, you declared that it was good. We are good. And by design, you teach us that all people are created in your image. Open our minds, free us from our misconceptions and prejudices. Help us to view humanity through your eyes. In this hour, help us to become aware of the full inclusion you require of all of us. May our words be acceptable to you as we teach the love and acceptance you offer and the vital roles you have prepared for all people, no matter their gender. This month, we honor women, but help us to create a world where women are always honored and celebrated, a world where a month of distinction is not needed a world where our leaders and ministers and professors are called and appointed based on the content of their character and their ability, not upon their gender or identity. In Genesis, it is written that Hagar proclaimed, you are the one who sees me. God, mother of us all, we affirm too that you see us, each of us, Empower us to share your good news with the world and help us to not forget to offer it unto ourselves. Amen. Please join me in singing the uh, oceans. You call me out upon the waters, the great unknown, where he may fail. And there I find you in the mystery, in oceans deep, my faith will stand. And I will call upon your name and keep my eyes above the waves. 
rise, when oceans rise, my soul can rest in your embrace, for I am yours, and you are mine. Your grace abounds in deepest waters. Your sovereign hand will be my guide. Where feet may fail and fear surrounds me, you've never failed, and you won't start now. And love call upon your name and keep my eyes above the waves when oceans rise soul will rest in your embrace for i am yours and you are mine oh Spirit, lead me when my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Creator. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Creator. And I and keep my eyes above the waves when oceans rise my soul will rest in your embrace for i am yours and you are me We are yours and you are ours. Um, I'm so grateful for our students here at Bright Divinity School for their gifts that they share with us. Um, thank you so much, Hannah, for that beautiful prayer this morning. And Emily, thank you so much for your prayer. I'm so proud of all of our students here and the ministry that they um, do. And I can't wait to see what you will blossom into. I thank God for you. Well, this morning, I'm happy to celebrate another one of our students, Elder Savannah Brooks. Savannah Brooks is a native of Fort Worth, Texas, and the mother of two children, Ryan and Adam, and she is a grandmother. Savannah has been an active, supportive member of Greater St. Stephen First Church since 1997. She has been active in various ministries there and has led in ministry for over 15 years. Savannah serves in an associate pastoral uh, role at Greater St. Stephen's, and she teaches a Tuesday uh, ministry class called Theology Tuesday, which is an alternative to Sunday morning. Savannah Brooks is a mighty, mighty preacher. If you have never heard her, you are in for such a treat on this morning. This morning, she lifts up her sermon entitled Reimagining Faith from Hebrews 11, verse 1. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, 
the conviction of things not seen. All the welcome and receive our student, Elder Savannah M. Brooks. Good morning. Wow, I was wondering who was she introducing? <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Flucker, for such a wonderful introduction and for an invitation to preach this morning. Uh, I'm always thrilled to be here and it is always a blessing and I am grateful for the opportunity. Please pray with me. Lord, I thank you for the power of your word. Lord, I ask that you would anoint your word today as a seed in our lives. Lord, speak through my lips. Lord, think through our minds. Help us. Give us the strength and the courage to do and to hear. It's in your name. Amen. Amen. I have several friends that have come and I'd like to thank them for being here this morning for supporting. She read the scripture. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen. Your scripture may say, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. You know, each time I come to the bright campus and I park down the street, I am amazed at the progress of the new building. At first I, I saw it, I admit, must admit I saw it as an inconvenience because I would drive down Barry coming from work trying to get to class on time and lo and behold, they blocked the street. Wow. <laughs> so I saw it as an inconvenience. And then one day I get back to my car and wouldn't you know, there's a ticket. <sighs> oh my goodness. I walked up, I see the ticket and I said, what? A ticket? Don't they know I paid $75 for that little sticker? Why in the world would they take the parking space? I didn't notice the little brown sign that said visitors parking, towing and forced. But as I jumped in my car and I rode over to the police station, the young lady was so sweet. She said, Miss Brooks, we'll take care of that this time. I said, thank you. As I look back on this experience, I realize there is a reimagining taking place. There is a reimagining of how this building will help meet the mission of Texas Christian University. There is a, a reimagining of how the facilities will provide the resources that support student learning. The new building, the trucks, the construction workers, the cones, the street closures, and even the change in the parking lot all signify great change taking place on this campus. It all points to the reimagining of the vision and mission of the school and how this school can impact the educational landscape of learning in Fort Worth. Expanding and growing, building and constructing, it's messy business. It's slow and convenient, but the outcome, I tell you, is well worth the trouble of a closed street. There is a reshaping, a reimagining of the possibilities for learning and for engaging the world in which we live. From start to finish, this new building should remind us that we too are a work in progress and that we are called to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior. We too are a work in progress, called to work of the reimagining of our faith to meet the world where it is so that we can participate with God to bring the world where God would have it to be. You see, something happens in our faith 
when we take the time to slow down for authentic reflection. When we eyeball the shape of our faith and reimagine what it could be if we love our neighbors as ourselves. If we serve the least, the lost, and the left out. If we embrace the stranger and offer hospitality, what could it be? What could this faith be if we provide basic accommodations instead of a bus ticket to immigrants to points beyond Texas? What could it be? If we value our children's education over high stakes testing, what could it be? What could it be if we look more and more like Jesus? Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. In what has been called the faith hall of fame, the writer of Hebrews lists brief biographical sketches of historical exemplars of belief in the unimaginable. Each person listed overcame some crisis, whether it was doubt, fear, loneliness, or even their enemies. It was by a conviction that anything and everything is possible with God's help. Some left home without knowing where they were headed. Some were tested to the limit of their intelligence and their emotion. Some died before they realized what they'd hoped for. All came to know a miracle working God who left them and each blessed God or pleased God with his or her faithfulness and received a reward. Each of them were willing to embrace the work of reimagining where they were to grasp new possibilities. You see many lines throughout chapter 11 in Hebrews begins with by faith. By faith, Abraham, by faith, Sarah, by faith, Noah, by faith. They latched on to God and walked through the personal, the social, the cultural, the economic, and the political upheavals of their time. It is by faith that we are called to reject the view of the world and challenge to see ourselves and our circumstances as God sees them. When the men and women listed in Hebrews 11 looked around, they too saw injustice. They too saw rebellion and they saw unrighteousness. They too experienced the uncertainties of life. The truth is that we all will be challenged in some way or another. The truth is that things will happen that will challenge our faith. The truth is that things will happen that will challenge our faith. On June 17, 2015, in Charleston, South Carolina, nine people were killed and one injured in a shooting in, Afri in Emmanuel African Methodist Episcopal Church, the oldest black church in the southern United States. The truth is that things will happen that challenge our faith. Think about it. May is a beautiful month, sunny days. May 24, 2022, elementary students sitting at their desk, doing their work, laughing and playing and having fun with their friends. Something will happen that will challenge our faith. Rob Elementary flashed across our TV screens. Something will happen that will challenge our faith. We lose spouses to cancer, jobs to downsize it, and family members to out of control opioid crisis. Things happen that will challenge our faith, that cause questions to arise and force us to grapple with what we believe. We must reimagine our faith by learning from and leaning into the rich history and tradition we have received. We did not get here by ourselves. Many before us wrestled with their faith. They asked questions and they engaged in a lifelong process to grow and become stronger. We did not get here by ourselves. 
John the Baptist comes to mind, that confident wilderness preacher. He found himself questioning face in a jail cell. He said to his disciples, hey, go down and talk to Jesus and find out, is he the one that we've been waiting for? Grappling with his faith in a jail cell. And so Jesus answers John's question so that he can hold on to the profession of his faith. I tell you that something will happen and we will be challenged at our level of our faith. Jesus answered John's question. Think about Mary and Martha, two sisters struggling with their faith at the death of their brother. Jesus, if you had been here, he wouldn't have died. If you had just come earlier, our brother would still be living. They were grappling with their faith. And Jesus says, wait, I am the resurrection and the life. They could believe Jesus for a future day, but yet they were grappling, struggling with their faith in the moment of right now. We did not get here by ourselves. We have a history of women and men, church mothers and fathers who lived out their faith and engaged the world to bring about change. We didn't get here by ourselves. We are not alone and God has not left us alone to do the incredible work of faith. Reimagining our faith means we must be okay with the struggle. I know that sounds strange to be okay with struggle. Let's face it, we'll never have all the answers to every question. You may be the great Jeopardy player in your living room, but we'll never have all the answers to every question. But when you think about it, faith is not about having all the answers. It's about learning to be comfortable, learning to live in and through the tension of your questions and what you believe. You'll never have all the answers. At some point, we must embrace the tension and allow it to stretch and grow us. Tension. Tension may be uncomfortable, but it is necessary. Tension may be uncomfortable, but just like the inconvenience I saw at the building of the construction, it is worthwhile. It far outweighs the uneasiness that we feel. Tension is necessary because it forces us to work out, to flesh out our faith so we can walk out our faith. Tension is unnecessary because it forces us to flesh out our faith, to figure out what it is we believe so that we can walk it out in a world that needs to see it. Reimagining our faith demands that we live out our faith by serving others by bringing our heads, our hands, and our hearts to the work. It requires that we engage in authentic relationships with one another and participate in loving community as we support each other on this day's journey. It requires that we examine the ways that we participate in the systems that uphold the structures and ingrain the ideas that rob people, communities of their dignity, of their respect, and of their protection. We must reimagine our faith. We must live and practice justice in God's ways, knowing and believing that God is in every person, loves every person, and promises each person a future filled with hope beyond our present circumstances. In every generation, there are persons who are gifted with seeing the invisible, expecting the impossible, and achieving the incredible. They always seem to anticipate the breakthrough. They believe something will happen even when others say there is no way it can take place. They are ever hopeful. Reimagining our faith causes us to look through the lens of hope and step into the potential of what can be. With new leadership comes new perspective new vision, and the reimagining of possibilities. As students, every class we attend, every book we read, every paper we write, every sermon we preach, and every encounter invites us 
to reimagine our faith. You see, reimagining our faith ignites within us the fire, the immeasurable presence of our God. Like Pauli Murray, I had the opportunity to watch a documentary about her. And Pauli Murray was incredible. She was a lawyer, a civil rights activist, a feminist, a poet, a biographer, and a priest. Wow, that's a lot of things to be. Polly protested and was jailed in sit-ins and bus rides, but I would dare to say that Polly Mary reimagined her faith in such a way that when she saw a good fight, she got into it. It was her faith that propelled her to move and to be all that God called, created, and capacitated her to be. She reimagined her faith in loving and liberating ways that impacted the church and the world. Like Polly Murray, we too have been given an invitation to get up to brand new mercies every day that offer us the opportunity to explore and expand our understanding of God and ourselves. We too have been given the incredible invitation to reimagine our faith so that we can make a difference in our homes, in our communities, in our churches, in our classrooms, on our campuses. We too have been given an extraordinary invitation to speak truth to power, to engage in service, to show hospitality, and to care for all of God's creatures. Reimagining our faith gives us the freedom, the energy, and the courage to be and do all that God has called us to. Reimagining our faith causes us to be like George Washington Carver, who took a little peanut and made over 300 different products. It causes us to dream and it sparks our imagination and our creativity. Reimagining our faith causes us to stand in the gaps like the Buffalo soldiers did for those who could not defend themselves. Reimagining our faith liberates us so that we can know God and make God known to the world. Reimagining our faith, the word of God for the people of God. Join me in singing. It's so unusual, it's frightening. The grace you offer is enlightening. And you call me out to pull me in. You tell me I can trust again. And I don't need to keep on hiding. I'm fully known and loved by you. You won't let go. You'll see me through. And it's not one or the other. Divine love and unbelievable grace to be known. Fully known and loved by you. I'm fully known and loved by you. It's so like you to keep pursuing. It's so like me to walk astray. But you got my heart with your love, the kind of love sent from up above. And I surrender to your kindness. I'm fully known and loved by you. You won't let go. You'll see me through. And it's not one or the other. Divine love and unbelievable grace to be known. Fully known and loved by you. I'm fully known and loved by you. How real, how wide, how rich, how high is your heart? I cannot find the reason. 
reasons why you give me so much. How real, how wide, how rich, how high is your heart? I cannot find the reasons why you give me so much. I'm fully known and loved by you. You won't let go. You'll see me through. And it's not one or the other. Divine love and unbelievable grace to be known, fully known and loved by you. I'm fully known and loved by you. It's so unusual, it's frightening. We're fully known and loved by you. This morning, our preacher talked about faith and how um, to deepen our faith in ourselves and in God. It, it doesn't come easy. Some work is involved. And if anyone can speak to their faith being tested repeatedly, it is Jesus. We know that Jesus sometimes struggled with his calling. He sometimes struggled to be the disciple and the prophet that God called him to be. But it was through that struggle that his faith was deepened. And he offers that to us here today to follow him and have that same faith that God is with us, that God is doing something through us and through our lives. Uh, and so on that night that Jesus was betrayed, he sat down with some of his disciples and he shared a meal. And at that meal, he took bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body that has been broken for you. Likewise, he took the cup and he blessed it. So it's a little crack here. He took the cup and he blessed it. And he said, this is my blood, the blood of new covenant shed for you. Friends, I invite you now to come forward to receive. Anyone who's prayed a thousand prayers and still can't find the answer anywhere Fighting off the lie that no one cares. For anyone who's out there losing hope. Feeling you're forsaken and alone. Clinging to the last strands of your own. May God give you eyes to see God still greater, courage to rise and believe God still able. May God be your peace in the fire you're walking through. This is my prayer now. This is my prayer for you. All of those with tired and weary souls that still have faith to ask for miracles, choosing to believe our dreams unfold. May God give you eyes to see God still greater, courage to rise and believe God still able. May God be your peace in the fire you're walking through. 
This is my prayer now. This is my prayer for you. Let us eat and drink together. God, thank you for this meal, this meal that reminds us of how faithful Jesus was until his last bodily breath. God, we thank you so much for learning from him and following him because it is, is, it is in through his life that we learn how to be people who trust in you and believe in you as you believe and trust in us. And God, we do not take that for granted. God, we don't take this moment for granted. And God, we thank you. It is in your name that we pray, amen. Okay, stand with me and sing our final song. I hope you know it, Crowded Table. Sing out if you do. You can hold my hand when you need to let go. I can be a mountain when you're feeling valley low. I can be a stream showing you the way home. If you can hold my hand when you need to let go. I want a house with a crowd at the table and a place by the fire for everyone let us take on the world while we are at the table and bring us back together when the day is done if we want a garden we're gonna have to let sow the seeds, plant a little happiness, let the roots run deep. If it's love that we give, then it's love that we reap. If we want a garden, we're gonna have to sow the seeds. Yeah, I. Want a house with a crowd at the table and a place by the fire for everyone. Let us take on the world while we're young and able and bring us back together when the day is done. The door is always open, your picture's on my wall. Everyone's a little broken, and everyone belongs. Yeah, everyone belongs. I want a house with a crowd at the table and a place by the fire for everyone let us take on the world while we're young and able and bring us back together when the day is done and bring us back together when the day is
Amen. Amen. While we're celebrating our phenomenal musician, Emily Maples, let's Let's also celebrate our proclaimer and preacher of this morning, Elder Savannah M. Brooks. Again, we are so proud of our students here at Bright and all of the gifts that they bring to this community. So thank you so much for sharing with us on this morning. Following worship, I'd like to invite you to a Carpenter Initiative event. There is a panel discussion called the damaging effects of anti-trans legislation on trans youth resourcing the churches. The panelists will include the Reverend Joe Hudson, pastor of New Church uh, in um, Dallas, Texas. The Reverend Dr. Winter Laws, a minister at The Gathering in Texas, Dallas. Reverend Lance Marshall, head pastor at First UMC Fort Worth and Reverend Neil Thomas, pastor of Cathedral Hope in Dallas. So we got Dallas in the house today. So we look forward to um, you joining us for that conversation. Right after we conclude today, we will be in Bass Conference Center. We are also going to feed you. So I hope that you're hungry um, and we are ready for a great, great conversation from the Carpenter Initiative. Now unto you, O oh God, who's able to keep us from falling and present us faultless in your presence. To the one and only wise, majestic God, all dominion and power now and forever. Amen. Thank you. 